Well, hello, everyone. My name is Tim Noakes. I'm from Cape Town, South Africa, and it's my privilege to speak on behalf of Tracy and for the men in the audience. And she asked me to speak a little bit about my own experiences in medicine and then finish up with a few key points about what I think makes a life successful. So I don't claim to have any special knowledge about that. I'm purely a scientist, an exercise scientist, but I've had a very interesting life. And so some of the le lessons I've learned, maybe I can take them over to the audience and, and to show you what I think. And I was very fortunate to discover, find my wife when she was 15 years old, and I fell in love with her the first time I saw her. And today, which is now 50, more than 50 years later, uh, we are happily married and we went an inseparable. So I was very fortunate and I, I appreciate not everyone can will ever achieve that, be that lucky. But if you can find someone who's your soulmate and live with them for more than 50 years, that's you're very fortunate. The second point I would say is to look after your health. And I think that's really what I've learned. And I've tried to do this all my life. I've tried to look after my health, but I got it completely wrong initially. You know, so so if you if you were just focusing on on those larger ruminant animals, you'd actually be harming less creatures. And so I, I actually think about this. I don't just look at it on a surface level and just go, oh, hurting animals is bad. I actually think about it and say, okay, well, what happens next? And then what happens next? And then what happens next? You know, because you have to replace that animal with something else. Okay. You replace it with a plant. And how did you get that plant? You know, well, animals had to die. More animals had to die. More animals had to suffer. The environment had to be destroyed. You had to dump a bunch of chemicals and pollutants and, and pesticides and chemical runoff getting into the groundwater, which kills more animals, you know? So you, you have to think past step one. You can't just look at things superficially. And so that's that's always been my mindset and how I try to approach things. You know, what does health mean to me, right? It really means me being totally available and present for that uh, family, that, that wife, the kids that I love, having the capacity to be not just present physically, but emotionally, uh, you know, uh, mentally, uh, spiritually, and just being comfortable as a man you know, with, you know, if I'm sad, can I express it? If I'm happy, can I express it? You know, can I express grief in a way that sometimes men don't do a great job of? But in order to fall that to be true, and I learned this in my functional medicine treatment, I have to think about, you know, my, 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 literally all the way down to the atom. Is my mitochondria healthy? Is my circulatory system happy? Is my digestive, is my stomach, I used to have an irritable bowel problem, which also led me to this way of thinking and trying to fix that. If my stomach's not happy, I'm not happy. I'm not a great husband. And I needed to work on that. So, so really just being healthy to me is having a body that's functioning like it should. And, and if that's true, then I can live my life purpose. And for me, my life purpose is to spread the healing message of metabolic health to as many people as possible. Exactly. I mean, you would think a pill will fix things. That's true for an infection and for pneumonia, for something quick. But chronic diseases, there's no, there's no pill for that to fix it. It's just kind of managing it. Uh, you know, one of the best, uh, what really the pivotal moment, I had this lady who was morbidly obese, who had fatty liver and was, her liver was failing. You know, she's not an alcoholic. So it was purely diet. And, but for some reason, I had a good rapport with her and she was ready for change. She was getting uh, worked up for liver transplant. That's hundreds of thousands of dollars in medications and really sickness. And I mean, it's not a fun trip. For some reason, she listened to me and then I, I didn't hear from her. A few months later, I reached out to the hus husband and she basically reversed her liver disease. She's not on a transplant list anymore. Her liver is completely normal by just simply cutting out junk, sugar, refined carbs. So that was like, I knew the magic of word and encouragement and people who are ready to do the work, uh, they can really transform and reclaim their health. Great quote from a motivational speaker called Les Brown, but he says, ask for help, not so that you appear weak, but so that you can remain strong and keep asking for help until you get it. Now, my moment of rock bottom was when I was gambling on a horse race in a country that I wasn't in, spending money that wasn't mine to be spent. And, and I realized that that was not the direction that I wanted my life to be in. You know, I was refreshing the page 
not even looking at it on TV just to see whether my, my bets had come in. And there was a phone number in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen that I'd never noticed before. But instinctively, I called it. It was for the gambler's helpline. And I spoke to this amazing woman, Mary, whose last name I'll never know, but I'll call her my Mary Magdalene because she was a guardian angel, whether she realized it or not. And she spoke to me about the incredibly high rates of suicide that problem gamblers experience compared to the other addictive disorders out there, drinking and drugs and whatever. And it's to do with how quickly you can lose everything. And that lit a fire in me to really take action because I knew that I was destined for great things. But at that point, I was headed, headed, headed for, for dirt and for death. I think one of the messages I want to let the guys know is, is don't wait. We're procrastinators when it comes to our health. I, I see it in cardiac rehab. I see it in the medical fitness component. Uh, the women are always stepping up first and trying to address their issues. And the men are hoping that it's not that and hoping that it'll change on its own. And that's a really bad way of handling things. So if you see your health heading in the wrong way, uh, a trajectory, a negative trajectory, or uh, you just don't like the medications that you're being told that you need to take, or you don't like the way you look or the way you feel, it's time to act. And what I'm really going to focus on today is what I, I think is the secret sauce in, in this coaching relationship and, and in the behavior modification space. Well, I've tried everything, probably the same as you. You know, I've tried Weight Watchers. I tried getting food delivered. I had diet pills. I got them from America. I got them from Thailand. Had meal replacement shakes. Who's tried the OptiFast or the SlimFast? The, the, the fantastic things that they promise you. It just didn't seem to work. Nothing seemed to work. Then one day, uh, a friend of mine, who he was great. He was one of the only ones who stood up to me and said, hey, mate, you're looking sick. You're not looking well. Well, at that time, being over 200 kilos, I was on 10 different medications and non-prescription. I was trying to take painkiller medications at 200 milligrams every half day just to function and just to get through life. I had 80% psoriasis all over my body. It wasn't a very pleasant experience, that's for sure. But once my friend told me about a thing called diet doctor, low carb, I was as skeptical as everybody else. I've tried for so many years. Okay, let's look at you know, my most common tips that I, uh, I give people. If you've got highly processed foods in your diet, just moving to unprocessed foods is going to make a difference to your health. That's why, I mean, Ellen and I were vegan for two years. Uh, eventually I did get low in energy, put on weight and uh, predisposed to getting sick. But, um, but definitely moving from a processed diet to an unprocessed diet is the first step. And do you know what that means practically? Is that you'll eat out of your fridge, not your pantry. So if pretty well everything you eat, you know, comes out of the fridge because it's fresh food, meat, fish, eggs, dairy, you know, uh, low carb veggies, low sugar fruits, things like that, uh, you are going to be healthier.